Okay, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, we are beginning forecasting, finally. We are uh, going to be winding things up with forecasting for the semester. Um, and I'm going to talk just a little bit about what forecasting is. So forecasting, well, forecasting is really just part of it. Um, really what we're talking about is time series data. So if time series, what's time series data? Well, um, we're going to be using some of the tools of regression. Uh, we're not always going to be using regression. Ultimately, time series is in any case where we have a dependent variable or a variable of interest. Um, we observe it on a regular basis. So what we were looking for so far has been what we call cross-sectional data. So a cross-section, uh, so this is as opposed to cross-sectional data. A cross-section is kind of all at one time, uh, lots, of different ob lots of different units of observation. So you look at uh, 50 students, right, and their GPA at one point, or um, 227 customers, you know, in, in March 2010, or something like that. Um, when we're talking about time series, a lot of times, one of the one of the most common things is that well, a lot a lot of business and economic data involves time series because <clears throat> any if you've ever seen stock returns over time, that's a time series, um, or unemployment or GDP. Uh, those are usually time series data. I mean, you can consider a cross section of different countries' GDP, but very often what you'll see is you'll see something like U.S. GDP, and then you'll see it over time. Um, and this kind of data is called a time series. So, if you have, it doesn't have to be those kind of things, but uh, sales and sales or revenue. You could do it with one person's height, right? So I have a very young son, and uh, you know you track a kid's height over time and it looks something like this T and uh, height or length for now since he's still young enough that we measure him by length and it goes like this something like that that's a growth, kid growth chart um, this kind of data where you have multiple observations of the same uh, unit of observation over time is called a time series um, and one of the first things you do with a time series generally is you make a time series plot now what does this look like? Oh, let me get Excel up and running here because I think Excel might be one of the best ways to show you. Um, so let's say that we have a time series. Uh, let's say we have quarterly data. So we have uh, year and quarter. And let's say we have data from 2005 uh, through 2006. Okay, so we have Quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. And what should we have? Well, let's say we have sales data. And I'm just going to make up some data here uh, to illustrate what this might look like. Okay. Now, in order to get a time series, what we usually need to do, a uh, time series plot, we need to index these periods one after the other like this, just in sequential order. A lot of times the symbol that we'll use for this is T, so you'll see me use that a lot. Um, and if you want to see what a time series uh, looks like, and this is an example of, actually let me make another, like sales one for firm A, sales two for firm B, I'll show you two different ones. Okay, so let's see. Time series plot. Select period, select sales. You can insert uh, a scatter plot like this. And this would be a time series, okay? So this uh, bottom for firm A, uh, this bottom uh, axis is our period. It's the time. Um, you can add some information down here if we want. Add an axis title. And then over here we have sales for firm A. And this is what you might call a horizontal plot. So let me sh throw some stuff down here while I'm talking. What do we have here? Well, we have a time series plot. And that's this thing right here. And one of the things you might see with a time series plot is a horizontal pattern. 
Um, this might be a horizontal pattern. There's not very much data here, um, so it can be hard to say. But a horizontal pattern is a pattern where uh, the data seems to fluctuate around kind of randomly around a mean. Um, this looks like it gets a little zigzaggier by the end, but it's kind of a horizontal pattern. Um, so the data fluctuate randomly. Um, and a good example of this would be, well, if you measure an, a full-grown adult's height every day or every month um, for between the ages of 20 and 50, for example, what you'll get is you'll get random variation due to measurement error or posture. Um, but ultimately, this is roughly what it would look like, right? It would fluctuate, maybe not very much, but it's going to fluctuate around mean, which might be that person's true height. Okay, now what other kind of patterns can we see? Well, let me copy this. And so now I still have this sheet where we have our horizontal pattern. I'm going to introduce a new uh, plot. What do we have here? Insert scatter. So this is sales for uh, firm two. And what we have for firm two here is a few things. One thing we have is what you call a trend pattern. A trend pattern is when uh, we have random fluctuation. But it's over uh, a constant trend, right? A gradual shift from lower to higher, or higher to lower. It can go the other direction, um, and so you might you, you might see a trend. Something like this might be, you know, temperature in March. If you measure daily daily mean temperature in March, it might bounce around or something. But it's probably going to be increasing throughout the month of March in the northern hemisphere, decreasing throughout the month of March in the southern hemisphere. And you might have a trend there within a, within that month. Um, another thing we we happen to have here, and this is a little bit harder to see, um, but you can kind of see that if we cut it here, we have sort of low, medium, high, medium, low, medium, high, medium, and that's called a seasonal pattern, and that's something else to look for. This is a repeating pattern over successive periods, um, and this is very common with quarterly uh, or annual or monthly data for a... Uh, for sales figures, stuff like that, right? So there are lots of goods that sell out very much in the summer. Um, home sales is one example, but there's lots of stuff that sell very well in the summer and not so much. Uh, employment also has a seasonal pattern. Um, but it doesn't have to be... Uh, what's the word? Oh, yeah, it doesn't have to be actual seasons within a year. Um, you could look at, uh, for example, World Cup merchandise. Um, World Cup merchandise. Let's scroll down a little bit here. So foot, the World Cup of, of what, what other people call football, what Americans call soccer, uh, World Cup merchandise is going to boom every four years, right? Because that's how often the World Cup happens. So I hear, I don't know, I'm not that up on it. I know that you're supposed to not touch the ball with your hands, but um, in any case, uh, that's still a seasonal pattern, even though it's over, over multiple years. Um, the main concern is just that you do have a repeating pattern, when you're going to do forecasting, that's very important because you're going to need to account for that seasonal pattern um, when you forecast, right? So if you want to forecast sales of uh, beach towels for July, you don't want to just take like an, a yearly average. You're going to want to bump that up because it gets kind of like what you might call like a July or a summer bonus. Um, so we're going to account for that. Um, so going back to here, now that you've seen some time series plots, I can show you that we also have... Uh, so let's see, the three that I've talked about so far are we have a uh, horizontal pattern, we have a trend pattern, we have a seasonal pattern, and you can have a seasonal without a trend, uh, right? You could just have constant kind of baseline sales. Um, what might that be? Oh, uh, tides, right? The height of the water over the course of a day, over the, you know, hourly. Uh, Tides would have a horizontal seasonal pattern, something like that. Uh, no trend, generally. Uh, maybe it does trend, I don't know. I don't know that much about the ocean. In any case, uh, so we have, and we also have one more. It's called a cyclical pattern. Um, what this will have is you'll have runs, you'll have what you call like high runs and low runs. And, uh, Employment really has um, a cyclical pattern, as do gas prices and other stuff. And these usually are due to longer uh, multi-year macroeconomic factors. Um, this stuff is be estimating this is beyond the scope of this class. And in ways, it's where uh, some of the money is made. 
in uh, in forecasting. In ways, it's also kind of voodoo. <laughs> I'm not sure how much I trust the ability of uh, people to to. In fact, I can say pretty pretty squarely, I don't very much trust the ability of forecasters to forecast cyclical patterns. Um, there are lots of forecasters, and uh, they don't do that much of a better job than average in forecasting cyclical stuff. That said, the rest of the stuff you can account for pretty straightforwardly. Okay. So, um, oh, just one note. There's a thunderstorm going on outside. So if you hear thunder, that's what it is. It's not you, it's me. So in principle, what we have is we have a series of Ys. Where a y is whatever whatever you care about, I happen to care a lot about my son's height, for example. So I'm glad that there's an upward trend there. Um, but we think that it's affected, uh, influenced by time, and that's what's what what matters here. It means that uh, our, one of our assumptions uh, on the error term that we made with multiple regression is clearly going to be flawed. We don't have independence of the error terms. Um, that's okay. Uh, we're mostly going to be just making point estimates for the purpose of this class. Um, but we think it's influenced through one of these four sources. Uh, one is the time trend. And this is, uh, again, a steady relationship. between y and actually might as well define it right here t is time between y and t so we think there's a steady relationship between y and t uh, it might be influenced by seasonality I'm going to be using a lot of words that aren't really words that have season in them <laughs> just bear with me they, we use these in forecasting this is a short term periodic short term periodic relationship between y and t like a pendulum swinging back and forth yeah i mean you graph the location of a pendulum you get a, like a, you can get you know a curve that looks very much like a a seasonal trend. Um, cycles. This is a, a long-term periodic relationship. And again, th with cycles, it can be kind of hard to, to get the right period. That's one part of the hard part of estimating it. Right? How often do recessions happen? I don't know. Every so often, but it's not like quarterly, <laughs> which, you know, quarterly is easy. There are four of them. Um, but uh, it's hard to know when cycles are going to stop. And then finally, an irregular relationship. An irregular relationship is, uh, well, unobservable. This is kind of like our error term. Unobservable, time-dependent influences. What might this be? Well, this might be, I don't know, you're measuring sales of summer gear. It might be freak storms or uh, the oil spill, uh, and that might be... Might have a might push things on a cyclical pattern, but in any case, um, we think there are regular effects. For now, we're not we are not talking causality, not looking at causal relationships. Um, we're just talking about looking at patterns and predicting patterns. That's really what we're interested in. And we're trying to get at the true why. We're going to count for time. Uh, we're trying, or we're trying to forecast a why. So that's really what's going on. We're trying to get at an underlying variable. Or we're trying to make a prediction about a future observation. Um, we're not making inferences uh, for the purpose of this class. I mean, we're not doing time series econometrics. We're not making inferences about about um, the influence of one thing on another thing, except for how time figures into that. Okay, so. That's the basic idea with time series. Um, I'm going to talk first about a few ways of making forecasts, and uh, I'll catch up with you guys next time, and we'll begin looking at predictions and forecast accuracy. Thanks. Bye.